Imagine a solitary figure standing at the edge of time, a lone observer perched between memory and possibility. Their eyes are not fixed on the present, but piercing through the thin veil of reality, seeing the invisible threads that connect human actions to their inevitable consequences. Picture a room where shadows of future events dance on the walls, flickering images of surveillance cameras, endless scrolling feeds, minds trapped in digital mazes. This is not a nightmare, but a living prophecy. The figure watches, not with fear, but with a profound understanding that civilization moves not in straight lines, but in intricate, interconnected patterns. Each breath they take is a whisper of warning, a reminder that the future is not something that happens to us, but something we collectively create. Our choices, our silence, our compliance. They are the brushstrokes painting the canvas of tomorrow. And in this moment of suspended time, the observer sees how small actions, seemingly insignificant decisions, can cascade into massive societal transformations. This is not magic. This is perception. The ability to see beyond the immediate, to recognize the subtle mechanisms of control, the invisible chains that bind human potential. To understand that freedom is not given, but constantly fought for, in every choice, in every moment of awareness. Born Eric Arthur Blair in 1903 in British India, Orwell's early life was shaped by the complex machinery of the imperial power. As a young man, he served in the Indian Imperial Police in Burma, an experience that would become his first profound confrontation with systematic oppression. Here, he witnessed firsthand the brutal mechanisms of colonial control, watching how power could dehumanize both the oppressor and the oppressed. This was not just a job, but a transformative experience. Orwell saw the colonial system as a microcosm of larger human tendencies, the desire to control, to categorize, to dominate. He would later write, I felt that I had got to escape not merely from imperialism, but from every form of man's dominion over man. This moment marked the birth of a writer who would dedicate his life to exposing uncomfortable truths. His journey continued to Spain, where he fought against fascism during the Spanish Civil War. Here, he wasn't just a soldier, but a witness to the complex political machinery that could twist ideologies into instruments of destruction. Wounded by a sniper's bullet, and later targeted by Stalinist forces due to his affiliation with anti-Stalinist militias, Orwell learned a brutal lesson. Revolutions can devour their own children, and ideology can become a weapon more dangerous than any gun. These experiences were not mere biographical footnotes, but the crucible in which his prophetic vision was forged. When he wrote 1984, An Animal Farm, he wasn't creating fiction, but mapping potential futures. He understood that totalitarianism wasn't just a political system, but a psychological condition, a state where language could be manipulated, truth could be redefined, and human spirit could be systematically crushed. Orwell's genius lay in his ability to see beyond the immediate. While others saw political systems, he saw human nature, its vulnerabilities, its potential for manipulation, but also its capacity for resistance. He wasn't just predicting a dystopian future. He was offering a warning, a blueprint for recognizing the first signs of societal decay. Battling tuberculosis and working tirelessly, Orwell wrote not for fame, but as a moral imperative. His words were weapons, precise, uncompromising, designed to pierce through the comfortable illusions of his time. When he died in 1950, he left behind not just books, but a lens through which generations would come to understand the delicate balance between individual freedom and systemic control. In the realm of human foresight, few writers have been as eerily accurate as George Orwell. His predictions were not mere guesses, but calculated observations of power's potential for manipulation and control. Surveillance. The watching eye. Orwell envisioned a world where privacy would become an obsolete concept. In 1984, the telescreen, a device that both broadcasts propaganda and monitors citizens, seemed like pure fiction. Today, our smartphones, smart TVs and digital assistants are the modern telescreen. We voluntarily carry devices that track our location, record our conversations, analyze our preferences and create comprehensive digital profiles. The difference, we're not just watched, 
were willingly participating in our own surveillance. Language and Thought Control, Newspeak In 1984, Orwell introduced Newspeak, a language deliberately designed to limit complex thought. By reducing vocabulary and eliminating nuanced words, the goal was to make certain ideas literally unthinkable. Look at our current media landscape. Sound bites, simplified narratives, polarised discourse. Social media algorithms create echo chambers that narrow our linguistic and cognitive range, making nuanced thinking increasingly difficult. Media Manipulation – The Ministry of Truth Orwell's concept of manipulating truth, where history is constantly rewritten to suit current political narratives, is chillingly present today. Who controls the past controls the future, he wrote. In our era of fake news, deep fakes and instant digital revisionism, truth has become a malleable commodity. Political spin, corporate messaging and algorithmic content curation create personalised realities where objective truth becomes increasingly hard to discern. Perpetual Conflict – The Endless War 1984 depicted a world in constant, seemingly meaningless war, a mechanism to maintain social control and channel public energy. Our contemporary geopolitical landscape often seems to echo this. Endless conflicts, shifting alliances, where the actual purpose becomes secondary to the act of maintaining tension and fear. Technology as control, beyond Big Brother. Orwell couldn't have predicted the internet, but he understood its potential for control. Today's technology doesn't just watch us. It shapes our desires, influences our choices, and creates a subtle form of psychological manipulation far more sophisticated than any historical dictator could have imagined. The most terrifying aspect of Orwell's predictions is not their accuracy, but how we've normalised these transformations. We're not experiencing these changes as a shocking invasion, but adapting to them, often with remarkable complacency. These aren't just predictions. They are warnings, a roadmap showing how freedom can be eroded not through sudden, dramatic seizures of power, but through small, incremental surrenders of individual autonomy. In the grand theatre of modern existence, we have become both the actors and the audience in a performance of perpetual consumption. Orwell warned us about external control, but the most insidious form of control is the one we willingly embrace. The tyranny of endless desire. Look around. Every screen, every advertisement, every targeted notification is a carefully crafted mechanism designed not just to sell a product, but to sell a lifestyle, an identity. We are no longer purchasing goods. We are purchasing temporary moments of perceived happiness fleeting illusions of completeness. Our smartphones have become more than devices. They are psychological extensions of our very being. Each notification is a dopamine hit, each like a validation, each purchase a momentary escape from the emptiness of our curated existence. We are constantly connected, yet profoundly alone. Our digital personas consume more energy than our actual selves. The modern marketplace has transformed human desire into an algorithmic science. Big data doesn't just predict our wants, it creates them. Machine learning understands our deepest insecurities and transforms them into personalised marketing strategies. We are no longer making choices. We are being chosen by complex systems that understand us better than we understand ourselves. Consumption has become our new religion, with brands as our deities and marketing as our sacred text. We define ourselves not by our actions, but by what we own, what we consume, what we display. Our wardrobes, our gadgets, our carefully curated social media feeds. They are not expressions of identity, but masks we wear to hide our growing sense of disconnection. Orwell saw the potential for control through external force, but our modern system is far more sophisticated. We are controlled through our own desires, our own insecurities, our own relentless pursuit of unhappiness that always seems just one purchase away. The ultimate irony, we celebrate our freedom while wearing invisible chains woven from our own consumerist dreams. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. The moral to be drawn from this dangerous nightmare situation is a simple one. Don't let it happen. 
It depends on you. In the vast landscape of human history, we stand at a crossroads. The future is not a destination, but a canvas we paint with our daily choices, our moments of awareness, our willingness to see beyond the illusion. George Orwell was more than a writer. He was a sentinel, a warning system for the human spirit. His work was not a prediction, but a prevention, a blueprint not of what must happen, but of what we can choose to avoid. Today, we're the inheritors of his vision. We possess something more powerful than any technology, more revolutionary than any ideology, conscious choice. Every time we question a narrative, challenge a system, or refuse to be reduced to a consumer profile, we are writing our own story. The power does not lie in grand gestures, but in small persistent acts of individual awareness, turning off notifications, reading beyond headlines, protecting our mental space, recognizing that our humanity is not defined by what we consume, but by what we understand, what we create, what we care about. Orwell showed us that the most dangerous prisons are the ones we build for ourselves, with our silence, our compliance, our unexamined acceptance. But he also showed us that these walls can be dismantled, one brick of awareness at a time. We are not powerless, we are not predetermined, we are conscious beings with the capacity to see, to think, to choose. The future is not something that happens to us, the future is something we create, with every breath, every thought, every moment of courage to see clearly.